Well, the Indian government has given the go-ahead for the country to start administering the world's first DNA-based vaccine against COVID-19. The pharmaceutical firm producing the vaccine, Genova, says its trials show a 67% efficacy against coronavirus. The technology behind the company's vaccine is also used in shots made by drug maker Pfizer, which recently had its vaccine fully approved by the US Food and Drug Administration to be used in the country. Mehmet Solnaz has more. Traditional vaccines inject a weakened form of a virus or bacteria into the body, and then our cells produce antibodies to fight it. But the Indian drug company Zydus Cadilla uses a method that has a proven record of success for animals, involving using part of the virus on genetic code to stimulate an immune response. Unlike traditional vaccines, in this method, antibodies are produced after small rings of DNA get in contact with cells. The drug company says 28,000 people participated in clinical trials with the vaccine showing 67% efficacy. If you look at our event data, all our event data was post April and May. Uh, and we know that in India, 99% of all uh, COVID cases were driven by the Delta variant. Even if you look at our vaccine in terms of when we did the uh, DNA analysis or the analysis of the variants for the breakthrough events that happened, uh, all of them were the Delta variant. The company also says the DNA-based vaccine is safe to be administered to children over the age of 12. Very good vaccine, world-class vaccine. And it is appreciated that in a record time where we need this vaccine urgently to prevent the emergence of third wave, particularly in the children. So this vaccine would be used in all children above the age of 12. And this vaccine is different from the earlier vaccine that this has used the uh, plasmid form of the DNA, uh, which is like other vaccines. The vaccine can also be tweaked to deal with more dangerous variants and only needs to be stored between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. But scientists are sceptical about the efficiency of DNA-based vaccines, as they have previously failed to produce a long-lasting immunity in humans. Despite this, the Indian government is keen to give these jabs a chance, as it aims to vaccinate the entire population by the end of the year. So far, only around 10% of the country are fully vaccinated. Mehmet Solmas, TRT World. Alexander Edwards is an Associate Professor of Biomedical Technology at the University of Reading. He explains why the new vaccine is welcome news in the fight against the pandemic. It's reassuring for, to, to point out that these ideas about different types of vaccine have been around for a really long time. So I think in a way we're just incredibly lucky that so many different types of vaccines all seem to be able to work. They work in different ways. We've got some, the simplest type of vaccine is literally the virus itself, which has been inactivated and that can generate a good immune response. Uh, that's, uh, for example, uh, been used by the Chinese vaccines. Um, we've also got a different type of vac a virus, so an adenovirus, which has been modified to make it look like the coronavirus. Um, that's what the Oxford AstraZeneca and the Sputnik vaccines are. We've heard so much about RNA vaccines, which are made out of, if you like, little fragments of the message that the vaccine, sorry, that the virus is um, um, was genome. But now we're getting a DNA one. So uh, the simplest way of thinking about it is it's just another way of mixing up and combining it. It has some advantages. The two really big advantages, um, which are special to the DNA um, uh, um, process, is that DNA is a relatively stable molecule. And so we would expect this vaccine to be able to be stored, perhaps even without refrigeration, but certainly in a fridge, without having to be distributed in a really, really cold minus 80 freezer. Another advantage, which hasn't necessarily been talked about much, which is pretty exciting, is that the delivery system doesn't even use a needle. It uses something that's a bit like a needle that kind of sprays the, the vaccine dose in. So that could be a big advantage for people who don't like needles, although, again, we need to see more data to understand understand how that works. Um, the final thing is the more vaccine doses we can make, the better because we desperately need them.